adhabun alim in hud it says ya nuh qad aksarta jidalana you give us a lot of jidal hiwa fa'tina bima ta'iduna in kunta min as-sadiq this hiwa between nuh alayhi salam and his people even in hud in many places we we'll see hud will say this they will say that this is hiwa so this came down up to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the messenger made hiwar alayhi salatu wasallam like we mentioned if we summarize and say to be a nabi or a rasul implies to make hiwar we would not have been wrong to say that because it meant talking to somebody and getting a response for what you say so hiwar is in the sunna it's not even restricted to the anbiya and rusul every person every individual that preaches islam makes hiwar so as we speak we sit down here and talk we are making a hiwar i'm trying to affirm this point like i mentioned earlier because of the kind of environment we we have found ourselves some of the people who stand up tomorrow and say it is hiwar they started talking about now this is innovation this is bid'a so we say an individual will say that because of the shortage either of knowledge or of sincerity we ask allah to teach us what will benefit us and make what he already taught us to benefit us and increase us in beneficial knowledge or shortage of sincerity so we also ask allah to purify our hearts make us amongst those who will do everything for his sake alone amen the topic indicated that our discussion would cover jami'u asnafinas like it says the entirety of the kinds or sorts of human beings so if we want to open up the discussion we'll be talking about how the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam talked to children how he talked to women how he talked to different sets of human beings how he talked to his enemies those who attempted to kill him how he talked to munafiqun how he talked to mushrikun yahud nasara and all of this but i thought that in a presentation like this aside from what we written in the papers it will inshallah do us benefit to pick just one of these and for the want of time to pick one of these discourses that will cover a wide range if not every of the rest of the discourses the messenger had with the people alayhi salatu wasallam so i chose to discuss his hiwar with the companion muawiya ibn hakam as-sulami muawiya ibn hakam as-sulami in this radiyallahu anhu in this treatise it occurs as hiwar an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam ma al ashab the messenger's dialogue or conversation with his companions radiyallahu an the hadith occurs in sahih muslim and it also occurs in other books of hadith like sunan abi daud sunan al imam at tirmidhi sunan al nasai mu'jam al imam at tabrani al kabir and others amongst the books of hadith and the ulama al imam muhammad nasiruddin al albani rahimahullah he said all the ulama of this ummah are agreed that this hadith is authentic i listened to an audio from him yesterday so i heard him say this hadith is graded authentic by all the entirety of the scholars of hadith who have had to mention this hadith and you would find also in their books like al imam al zahabi in his mukhtasar of the book al ulub al hafiz ibn hajar badruddin al aini many of them they grade this hadith authentic if you ask why are we discussing then that the hadith is authentic we say because some young people come up now to say the hadith is not authentic so that is the reason why that affirmation was required 
May Allah forgive us. The hadith is the hadith of Muawiyah ibn Hakam as sulami Muawiyah ibn Hakam is not Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, Abu Abd Rahman al Qurashi, Amirul Mu'minin. This is not the Muawiyah we are talking about. Because amongst the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, Al Hafiz ibn Hajar had mentioned over 40 amongst the companions who were named Muawiyah. Muawiyah, Muawiyah. There was even Muawiyah ibn Muawiyah al Muzani from Banu Muzaina. So there were a lot of Muawiyah, Muawiyah amongst the companions. Even though the most popular amongst them was Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, Abu Abdurrahman, al Qurashi. Why are we talking about this? Ulama say in this kind of discourses, they say Zukir Ali Tamiz. We are mentioning it to differentiate between other kinds of Muawiyah that we had known. So he was the one that this occurrence came up with, with the Prophet Muhammad. And he's from Banu Sulaim. He will reside, the Banu Sulaim at the time resided at the outskirts of Medina. So they will come into Medina. He would come, stay some time with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, and return to his people. So he was ascribed his nisba is with Banu Sulaim. So that's why he's referred to as what as Sulami, because there is there are those who are also referred to as as Salami. In writing, it will be the same. As Salami, these people were ascribed to Banu Salama. But this is a sulami in ascription to what? Banu Sulay. So this hadith has to do with him. Radiallahu anhu. Says, Baina ana usalli ma rasulillahi. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Once while we were praying. During the prayer with the Prophet Muhammad. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. If atasa rajulun min al qawm. Suddenly. A man amongst the people sneezed. Ali Imam Shamsul Hakul Azim al Abadi in his Sharh of Sunan Abi Dawood. He says, What is apparent? Al Zahir. He says, What is apparent regarding this hadith here is that the person who sneezed said, Alhamdulillah. And that was why what followed followed when he says, Fakultu. He just accepted Islam at the time. And he was told, as is in the next hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood, although that is not is weak, but there are meanings in it, in this authentic version of it that indicates that aspects of it are correct. For example, in the riwaya, the next riwaya in Sunan Abi Dawood, it says, that the person says, Muhammad Allah, the one who sneezed, he made Alhamdulillah. So he made Tashmeetul Atisko, that is to say, Yarhamukallah, to the one who made Alhamdulillah. He said, because he was told after accepting Islam that whoever amongst the Muslims that sneezes and says Alhamdulillah, those who listen to him should say, Yarhamukallah. I should mention a point here. Most times people think, if a person sneezes in a congregation and just one amongst the attendees in that congregation says, Yarhamukallah, it suffices for the rest of the people. There are reports that indicate that it is not correct to have this thinking. Every person who hears the tahmid is entitled to also say, Yarhamukallah, to make tashmid of this artist. So he says, Fakultu Yarhamukallah. So I said, Yarhamukallah. May Allah shower his blessings on you. Don't forget, he was on Salah. Radiallahu anhu. He says, Faramani al Qawm. Aw Faramani al Qawm bi Abu So the people diverted, directed their sights towards me. Radiallahu anhu. Everybody was looking at Muawiyah ibn Abi. Muawiyah ibn Hakam as Oh, strangely, what is this you are doing in Salah? Yarhamukallah in Salah. He says, Fakultu wa sukla ummaya 
wa sukla ummaya sukla ummiya may your mothers miss you it's an expression to say why are you looking at me turn your faces away from me so but it lexically actually means may your mother miss you although the ulama say he made this regarding himself like saying halaktu i'm in trouble so he was not actually abusing them but he made an exclamation to indicate that for the fact that everybody turned their attention to him then it meant that he was in a mess so he made that statement and says when he made that he says Masha anukum tanzuruna ilayya. what is wrong with you why is it that you all look at me he was still in the salah the messenger alayhi salatu was salam was leading the salah ikhwa so he made that statement so he says Masha anukum tanzuruna ilayya. why is it that you all cast your glances at me he says fajalu they began to beat their lapses their laughs their ties with their legs shh, shh, a kind of with strong glances of discomfort with what he was doing trying to make him stop talking by way of indication as we described he at the beginning from all of these there is he because linguists believe that even directives are aspects of hewa whatever an individual and by any manner an individual attempts a communication with you respond then hewa is established so it means person said after sneezing yarhamukallah and said alhamdulillah and he said yarhamukallah there is one and when they started looking at him even though they did not make a speech that is also hewa because he did what they said and he was react so there was far established right from the beginning of this hadith so he says rahima radiyallahu an falamma ra'aytum yusammituni when i found out that they all attempted to make me keep silent he felt annoyed as, an, as a human being he wasn't pleased with it but sakatu. i remained silent i kept quiet after he had spoken during the salah after the messenger alayhi salat was salam ended his salah fabi abi umi Fabi Abi Huwa wa Ummi. He said, I fidaul ab wal um is what he says here. I give my father. Let my father and mother be sacrificed for the Prophet Muhammad. Al Imam al Bukhari in Al Adab al Mufrad made a tabweeb and brought some ahadith indicating that it is allowed for a Muslim to make such an expression. And he himself did it alayhi salatu was salam on the day of uh, Uhud regarding Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas. He also did it alayhi salatu wasalam with respects to Ali ibn Abi Talib. The messenger made fida of Ab and Um for them. So it indicates that it is from the Sunnah to say that. So Muawiyah ibn Hakam as Sulami radiallahu anhu say, may, may my mother and father be sacrificed for the Prophet. I give my parents out. Why? Because these are the most beloved things to any human being. So if he is ready to give it out for somebody's sake then it means that reason for which the individual is presenting both parents is a very big significant active he was overwhelmed by what the prophet did alayhi salatu wasalam he says ma wala ba'dahu ahsana ta'liman minhu I'd never seen any human being Mu'alliman Who will teach something to any individual Qablahu wala ba'dahu ahsana ta'liman min Who before him Or after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
who knew how best to teach somebody alayhi salat was i'd never seen a better teacher before or after that incident than the prophet muhammad alayhi salat was salam he says for wallahi i swear by allah this is also indication that when an individual speaks and attempts to affirm the truth in his expressions he could swear by allah and this is not condemned because here he says for allah and nobody had asked him to swear by allah so it is not in every case that a person swears when he was not asked to swear by allah that the sharia frowns out but sometimes when an individual attempts to affirm a fact or a point significant it is not wrong for him to say wallahi i'm saying this also because we are in ilori and people are used to making oaths and swearing although most of them will go under law la yu'akhidukum allah bil law fi aymanikum walakin yu'akhidukum bima aqadtumul ayman so most of them will go under law statements that are not meant by those who make them so that is where those will go but in case a person really means to affirm a point it is not wrong to say wallahi and when a person says that we should not look at him with a demeaning eye that why is he swearing because there is a hadith that amongst when the last hour comes the people will swear when they were not asked to swear so ulama yes employ this hadith to say we should re- reduce our swearing and in that verse in al-maida to allah wonders he says wahfadhu ayman so he says here radiyallahu an says fa wallahi ma kaharani wala daradani wala shatamani ma kaharani the messenger alayhi salatu wassalam he did not abuse me he did not disgrace me he did not demean me wa ma daradani he did not ask them to beat me neither did he himself beat me the two of them would imply if he had other the people to beat him it could mean the prophet beat me too neither of these did he do alayhi salatu wassalam ma kaharani wala aw wa ma darabani wa ma shatamani also he did not speak words of insults to me this is one major aspect of dialogue and hiwa that many of us who ascribe ourselves to the sunnah we fail these days we fail to be patient with people especially if we can imagine that these people have not known so much but the person who will know that the person he is talking to has not known so much is the person who paid attention to know if you didn't pay attention to know the condition of the person you want to speak with it's one of the issues we discussed in this book one of the ways of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he spoke to any group of people was he addressed them accordingly when he spoke with the ulama amongst the companions that's the way he talked to them when he spoke with abu bakr and siddiq that's the way he spoke with him when he spoke with mushrikun that's the way he spoke with them when he spoke with yahud it was different from his manner of speech with nasara because they are different these people are maghdub alayhim these people are what balloon these people are people of ilm yahud knew they had knowledge or they had some knowledge but this nasara they were just stupid ignoramuses they did not know anything balloon so the approach to speak with a learned person is different completely from the approach with somebody who is not learned but if you do not pay attention you would put round pegs in square holes round pegs you make them occur in rows that are holes that are necessarily square so we should pay attention in our discourses with muslims we should give the people excuses we should be patient with them we should try to understand where they are coming from their backgrounds and it will make us be able to present a talk like he mentioned that uh hiwar that is akim but will have a hiwar that is najih 
that is beneficial and uh, fruitful if we are patient in our discussions with the people this man this event this hadith is the only hadith that he has reported muawiyah ibn hakam he has no other hadith the other aspects of his reports are the same hadith that are broken into pieces otherwise the same hadith it indicated that for him the best thing he could tell anybody about the prophet muhammad was this event and he says for wallahi ma kaharani wa ma darabani wa ma shatana he had not even told us the correction the prophet corrected him alayhi salatu he was more interested in the manner of the prophet correcting him radiyallahu anhu how did the messenger correct me it was in salah he was telling the people wa sukla umia it was in salah he was saying ya rahmuka allah during the salah if we were the ones how would we have handled the situation yes we say sunnah 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 this is sunnah now from the sunnah hiwar is being patient with the next person but are we are we and not just that he was convinced and he had to take to what the prophet was going to say he was more interested in he put that forward how the prophet did it alayhi salatu so muawiyah ibn hakam as-sulami he says qala inna hadhihi as-salah so this salah la yasluhu shay'un minha naam aywa now the messenger alayhi salatu was salam spoke to muawiyah he told us the prophet corrected him alayhi salatu so he wanted to tell us what did the prophet say and how did he say it says in hadhihi as-salah la yasluhu fiha shay'un min kalam an-nas after he noticed that the prophet was not aggressive against him as many of us are aggressive against people the advice the instruction from the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was in hadhihi as-salah this salah you perform this obligatory salah this salah that allah has brought me to teach you la yasluhu it is not proper it is not nothing is appropriate in it shay'un min kalam an-nas nothing of the speech of human beings is allowed in it it means yarhamuka allah in salah is shay'un min kalam an-nas so it's not allowed when he made the other statement of condemnation with the rest of the companions why are you looking at me it is also shay'un min kalam an-nas so he said alayhi salatu was inma huwa at-tasbih wa at-takbir wa qira'atul qur'an the only thing this salat allows is at takbir to say allahu akbar as we move from one posture to the other and at tasbih to make tasbihat from one place during the salah it means generally azkar wa qira'atul qur'an and what we read of the qur'an uh, during salah so we'll see this character of the prophet muhammad and how well he handled this hiwar this event occurred in the masjid and that the most likely thing was that the rest of the companions were also watching the hiwar between muawiyah ibn hakam as-sulami and the prophet muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and that's why we mentioned that al-imam mabul Ishaq Muhammad ibn Khuzayma he also mentioned it in Kitab al-Tawheed he has a book apart from Sunan uh, Ibn Khuzayma he has a book in which he mentioned this hadith and that riwayah has come from the riwayah of Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu but this riwayah in Sahih Muslim and other books of Sunan like we mentioned at the beginning is from the riwayah of Muawiyah ibn Hakam himself radiyallahu anhu so for the rest of the companions this this action of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because in every hiwar once we fail to pay attention to what the other party says it is better to say the hiwar has failed 
I came in when my brother was tells Raji, Ibn Raji was saying that. Once you cannot pay attention to the next person, the hiwar will fail. And this is what for which Muawiyah ibn Hakam al-Sulami was praising the Prophet Muhammad And this is what many of us lack in our da'wah upon sunnah. The Messenger alayhi salatu was salam. Al-Imam al-Bukhari in al-Sahih and also in al-Adab al-Mufrad. He mentioned the hadith and it is authentic. We know it. Yassiru wa asiruko. What did he start it with alayhi salatu was salam? He says, Allimu nasa umura deen. Teach the people the affairs of their deen. Then he says, Yassiru. Yassiru in what? In fi ta'aleem. Fi da'wah. When you teach the people, make things easy for them. Do not make things difficult for the people. Not just that. Tell them things that will like to that will make them like to do more. Things that will entice them, that will give them glad tidings about what they are upon. Don't say things that will make the people run away. If what the messenger started with alayhi salatu was salam was grab muawiyah you you didn't know we are upon salah and all of this it would not perhaps have created the kind of impact that it created in the person of muawiyah why he mentioned it in the next line of the hadith he says Kul tu ya Rasulallah. after that he was encouraged to ask other questions because he got a good treatment from the prophet muhammad it is very very natural if you have a good treatment you want to invite somebody to islam and he treats you well he makes you think look just try to understand what i'm telling you perhaps he will even be better than some of those who had entered before him look at what he mentioned regarding the prophet muhammad he says he mentioned he says wallahi he did not say, mu'alliman ahsana ta'aliman minhu. I'd never seen anyone who was good at teaching like him, alayhi salatu wasalam. It meant it created a lot of impact in him. This is the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, I always say, the sunnah is not all about beard and the trousers. It's not just all about that. Unfortunately, if, when we like to describe somebody being upon sunnah, we say, ah, he has beard and his trousers are nisf. Yes, it's just some aspect of the sunnah. In fact, that is not the sunnah itself. Because it is very, very likely that the, the beard of people like uh, Zuhu Waisira, the grandfather, as they say, of the Khawarij, and his followers have greater beard. Because they kept beard, great, big, huge beards. Of course, they believe that when you touched anything in it, you'd be, you'd be di di disbelieved. The person had disbelieved. So they never touch the beards. So don't ask where their trousers will be. Don't ask. It will be nisf. So from the sunnah is being careful about how we want to teach the people deen. There are a lot of examples. We remember the hadith of Ubay ibn Ka'b. Likewise, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, Abu Abdurrahman. We remember that if he, this hadith is in Sahil Bukhari, that of Ubay follows it in Al Bukhari. When he prayed Salatul Isha with the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, he went to his people to lead them in Salah, to some people to lead them in Salah. Go. And on, on an occasion, he led the Salah, performing the Salah, making it lengthy. Mu'adh. There is the same pizza with Ubay ibn Ka'ab. They are both in Sahil Bukhari. The Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, told them the same thing. And they are both from the people of the Quran. So when those who read the Quran extend their readings during the Salah, they should not forget those behind them. Because it was regarding this the Messenger mentioned alayhi salatu wasalam. When the man who prayed and found that the salah was being too lengthy behind Muaz, he left Muaz, stood by aside in the masjid, made his salah and went away. Not just that, he went to the Prophet Muhammad and reported the case to him. When Muaz came, he said this man was munafiq. Muaz was is one of the ulama of this. He says, alayhi salatu wasalam, أعلم أمتي بالحلال والحرام معاذ بن جبل. 
And this hadith is authentic. So he wasn't an ignorant person, radiallahu anhu, muaf. Yet, he, so when he said the man was munafik, he was speaking based on knowledge. Of course, because Salatul Isha is different, difficult for upon munafiku. So perhaps, perhaps, he judged upon this hadith. So the messenger called the other man. The man said, I don't understand this dandana of Muaz. So when he explained what Muaz did, I just came, performed my salah, I went out of the masjid. The messenger turned to Muaz, alayhi salatu. He says, Afatanun anta ya Muaz. You want to bring about fitna for this individual, oh Muaz? Salah, during salah. So how about those who bring fitna to people in the aspects of their deen outside salah? How is that? And it was in the same instance the messenger mentioned alayhi salatu and salam that do not do things that will send the people away from the deen. Ah. So even how long an individual extends his salah may make some people stay away and not come to that masjid for salah. So all of these things we should look at them as we deal with the people. I'm a kind of giving some emphasis upon this because I think strongly, especially in this environment where we are the shidda with which we handle the people is too is too firm is too strong i think we need to relax with the people who have not understood what we understand or who already understood but are still battling with their hawa we need some patience with them in making them understand what we do and that being patient with them in those respects is also from the sunnah of the prophet muhammad Alayhi salatu was salam. Now, so Muawiyah ibn Hakam al Sulami was encouraged to ask further questions from the Prophet Muhammad. So he says, Kul tu ya Rasulallah. So I said, O Messenger of Allah, inni hadithu ahdin bi jahiliyat. So he confessed. I have just left Jahiliya. Recently, I only accepted Islam. So he has questions now. He was encouraged to ask, and he asked very, very important questions. He says, I just recently left Jahiliya. And Allah has brought us this great deen of Islam. The question is, وَإِنَّ مِنَّا رِجَالًا يَأْتُونَ الْكُهَانِ They are amongst us those men who visit soothsayers. See the question? It was about salah. But look at the question is asking issues that have to do with kufr. Yes, the issues of kuhan, they in some cases will make uh, kabira, ashirk al asgar and in some cases, they will all actually make the kind of shirk that will take the individual out of Islam, depending on what the person employs while making his uh, fortune telling or sorcery. May Allah protect us. So he was asking, Inna minna al There are some men amongst us who still visit or who visit these soothsayers because they are very, they were and are still very common amongst the Arabs. People go visit. To say, except in the lands of Tawheed that Allah has enabled Tawheed. Yet people still go underground. But the punishment there for things like this is death penalty. May Allah protect us. Likewise, Sihr, the official state punishment for things like this is death penalty. So it keeps the people, shoves the people away from it. So the Prophet said, Alayhi salatu Fala ta'atihim. Don't go to them. It appears that La Ta'atihim would mean an instruction for Muawiyah alone. But it is instruction for everybody. Because the ulama say, Al Amru lil Wahid, Al Amru lil Kul, Illa lil So when the messenger orders a person, like he told uh, Malik ibn Khuwairis and his people, Sallu Kamaru Aitimuni al 
yes because they were about 19 or 20 so when he says Solu, he was referring to them but when they got 20 but when he did and they spent 19 days but when they got to their people they taught their people they didn't say no Amuruna. he was only ordering us he wasn't ordering you because they understood that order to mean for you and those who hear from you so when he says alayhi salatu was salam here fala talk to him do not go to them this is a clear cut evidence that it is prohibited haram for a muslim to visit uh the fortune tellers somebody wants to marry he wants to go and ask from somebody wants to do a business he wants to go and ask somebody wants to do something he wants to go and find out whether it will be good and all of this this hadith who made us to know it another very creed related question he asked minna rijalun yatatayyarun there are amongst us men who made tatayyur tatayyur atiyara is taking omen evil omen from birds even though the word is generally used for making omen what does omen mean a person wants to go out on a journey so when he comes out of his house he finds beds when they flew to the right he said oh it means this journey will be good when they flew to the left he took another omen oh this journey will be bad this is omen that people make but because the arabs were used to making such omens with the use of birds that was why this word is like ascribed to to you so it says tatayyur as if they are the ones flying or keeping birds to fly so it says inna minna rijalun yatatayyarun the messenger says uh, alayhi salatu was salam in response to this question from muawiyah ibn hakam as sulami he says zaka shay'un yajidunahu fi sudurihim that is just something they find in their hearts when a person comes out of his house he hits his leg against a stone say oh the house where i'm going is not going to be fruitful this is just something that comes up the minds of people so he says such a thing should not prevent them from doing what they want to do so you want to marry a woman because Al Imam Al Bukhari mentioned a hadith in Al Adab that two things or three that the people take make tafa'ul because the opposite of atiyara uh, and tatayur is at tafa'ul being optimistic wakana yu'jibuhu haba at tafa'ul and the messenger alayhi salatu was salam liked tafa'ul being optimistic positivism he liked it alayhi salatu was being positive so from the things people take positive uh, future from are uh, the issues of a house you see a person parks into a house you say oh since i parked into this house my business has been good since i married such so and so woman yorubas do that a lot they say the feet of that woman is good so the hadith occurs in al adam people make a lot of tafa'ul from women and from houses and arabs like and encourage us to make tafa'ul being positive it is part of being hopeful with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they say even though this statement occurs as a hadith from aisha radiallahu anha with al imam al tabarani and al imam al bayhaqi the correct thing is that this hadith is munka but the statement is correct people make tafa'ul that is you should be optimistic with what you like to become very only little are those events incidences that you will make tafa'ul you'll be optimistic about that something should occur except that it soon occurs so we the dean likes us to make tafa'ul but it discourages at or at So this question was asked by who? Muawiyah ibn Hakam. You see, it's a long dialogue between himself and the Prophet Muhammad. 
And who created the opportunity? The Prophet Muhammad. How? Giving him the opportunity, being patient with him, ready to listen to him. And you see these issues. He was not now asking about issues of Salah. He was asking about issues of Aqidah now. Because he had the chance from the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He asked a third question. He says, rijalun yakutun. We have men amongst us who make khat. I think in areas like this, they refer to things like that as hisab. People draw lines on the ground by way of fortune telling. When I was young, I've seen one before. He had a tray upon which he had some, some quantity of sand and they will draw lines and they will start reading. It's khat. The khutu. So I think the Arabs in the time, they used to write that on the ground. Sometimes they call children to read it. And they tell them. They have connections with themselves. So these things were common amongst Arabs. Once I, a brother told me that there are books in Arabic written about things like this. I'm not aware. I don't know. About these things they call hisab. Khat. By way of teaching some other people to adopt it. May Allah protect us. Muawiyah ibn Hakam al-Sulami radiyallahu anhu asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna wa minna rijalun yakhutu. There are men amongst us who make khat. They make what you call hisab today. And Prophet said alayhi salatu sallam. Kana nabiyu min al-anbiya yakhut. There was one amongst the prophets that had gone past. Yakhut. He used to make something like that. In the riwayah of Abu Dawud has with Nas. In that of Ali Imam Muslim it says, But they mean the same thing. It is what they have that is made that differs. It means, so whoever's cut way of making these lines, drawing lines for fortune telling, conforms with the manner in which that Nabi used to do Fadaka. Then there is no blame in that. The question is, who knows how that Nabi used to make his khat? So Ulama referred to this as At-Talik bil That is, you connect the ruling to something that cannot occur. Meaning that there will be no ruling. Because you don't know. Any person who comes out now to say this was when we were younger than this. Um, they used to say, you know, Allah told us about Suleiman in Sod. What did he say? In Sod. In Sad, Allah spoke about Suleiman. What did he say about Suleiman? Towards the end of the page, down. Saba. Sad. The point is, this verse, they used to, the Afas would say to us at the time that. The, there is a dua Suleiman made for which Allah returned him to his place of authority. It started with the number of children, subhanAllah. Jasadan summa anab. Kala rabbi ghfirli wa habli mulka la yambagi li ahadim min ba'di. This is what the Quran told us Suleiman did. There, is some, there are some khurafat there. And it, they occur in the books of Tafsir. What brought about Suleiman leaving his palace? How was it that Suleiman was made to go off his kursi? Allah said, and we placed on his throne, Jasadan, 
a creature because he did not tell us how the creature was summa anab there's also hadith in sahih muslim about his vow to have children all of whom will go on the path of allah there are riwayat of 70 there are riwayat of 79 there are riwayat of 90 all of ulama say these the numbers does not matter what it meant was that he intended to have a lot of children and no one had a child except a woman this hadith occurs in sahih muslim the point is at that time the malams will say they have the dua that Sulaiman made alayhi salam for which Allah returned his ring to him they have a dua so they say it and they make the children to memorize it at the time so when the people make things like this they go far beyond because we'll ask them how did you know that that was the dua of Sulaiman the point is if anyone comes up to say he knew the hearts of that Nabi, like some people claim to know the dua Suleiman made, some may come up to say they know the hearts, it is proper to ask them how did they know? Who taught them? From where does it come from? So it is very important. So it is not possible to know. So if it is not possible to know, then it is not allowed to make hearts. And it is not allowed to make hot. So look at the kind of questions that Muawiyah asked the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It had not finished. So he told us, radiyallahu an. He says, وَكَانَتْ لِيَ جَارِيَةٌ تَرْعَى غَنَمًا لِيَ كِبَلَ أُحْدِمٍ He said, I had a slave girl who would uh, tender my livestock for me. Take care of them move around with the livestock kibala uhdin wal jawaniya and jawaniya these places are not towards medina and around the same area there, there are ulama making statements about where is jawaniya and all of this but what it appears allah alam as some of the ulama mentioned is that they are both not towards medina that al jawaniya is not far from uhud itself so she would go around both areas with the livestock of Muawiyah ibn Hakam. فَاطَّلَعْتُ ذَاتَ يَوْمٍ فَإِذَا أَذِّئْبُ قَدْ ذَهَبَ بِشَاتٍ مِنْ غَنَمِهَا So she said, he said one day I just looked at, like checking what now do you have. And he observed that and the animal fox had gone away with shot, a sheep from the livestock. One of them, the animal had taken it away. He says, Wa'ana rajulun min bani Adam. And I'm a man from amongst the children, descendants of Adam. Asafu kama yasifu. I get strongly annoyed. Ulama say, this is worse than, it is deeper in meaning than mere gadab. Because we see Allah says, Falamma asafu nan taqamna. Ulama say it is far deeper in its meaning than mere gadab. Gadab, then deeper than gadab is what Allah mentioned in that verse of the Quran. So he says, Ah Safu, meaning I also grow extremely angry. Kamaya Asifu. As human beings ordinarily grow angry. Imagine if you have two cars, you give one to your younger brother to take children to school. And then he misses one of the cars and you can find out that it was out of his own misdemeanor. How are you going to feel about the child? You, so he said, Radiallahu, La kinni sokak to her sokat. So I beat her. Because I'm a human being. Get angry. Like other human beings. Get angry. He says, to Rasulullah sallallahu So I came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi and he spoke of that condemning it seriously he gave serious condemnation making me feel subhanallah i have done something so great having to beat up the girl or slap the girl Kultula, ya Rasulallah. He said i said oh messenger should i free her should i allow her to go <laughs> by way of compensating for growing so angry and beating her up 
I'm trying to summarize now because my time is up. So he said, Should I beat her? Should I should I free her? And the prophet said, Alayhi salatu was that bring her to me. So he brought the lady, the young girl, slave girl, to the Prophet Muhammad. And the Prophet asked her what we would refer to a billion. Many of the Muslims do not care about these questions. Muslims. And a slave girl, slave girl, a slave girl, a slave girl at the time would understand what it meant. Today, if you ask a person who would wear a turban and present as a scholar, he may fail the question. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu Aina Allah. Where is Allah? I am well aware that many of the um, orientalist trained academicians dislike questions like this. I'm sorry. No, no, you are not orientalist trained. Abu Malam Ibn Raji. Many of the orientalist trained Islamic studies academicians dislike questions like this. They say it is irrelevant where Allah is. If it were irrelevant, would you, would you attempt to say that the best of human beings in this kind of a circumstance was asking a question you consider irrelevant? What is irrelevant? Your statement or the action of the messenger? So it implies that when you hear these people make these statements, know where they belong. But don't forget, be patient. Be patient with the people. Be patient with the people when you explain. You can come up with this hadith. Messenger alayhi salatu was At the point of asking to free a girl, slave girl, ask the girl, Ain Allah, where is Allah? It's a question. Many of the people, some of the people who ascribe to the Sunnah don't know where Allah is. And this is Sunnah now. This is from the Usul of Sunnah. Al Imam Al Muzani started his Sheikh Sunnah upon this. Mas'alatul Ulum. He started his Sunnah on it. Where is Allah? And the little young slave girl said, Fissama above the heavens perhaps we should go a bit above the heavens where above his arsh arsh is tower but the ulama call our attention say when he's, you say allah is over the arsh does it mean he's relaxing on the arsh as a king would relax on his arsh and it would mean that allah is taking support with the thing that he created so Allah is above the arsh, not resting on the arsh. Because it is part of what those rationalists will say. If you say he's upon the arsh, and the arsh is carried by malaika, it means they are carrying Allah. Say la. He's above the arsh, but he's not resting on the arsh. So he makes them to carry the arsh. But he's not on the arsh that they carry. He's above that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kabir. Look at Al Ali, you, the one who is above all things. Everything of Ulu is with Allah. Al Ali, you, the highest thing is who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How would we have known all of these if the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam did not pay attention to make good knowledge based, knowledge based, hiwar with Muawiyah ibn Hakam. The question was not over. Because that is one aspect of Shahada. Cool? You say, Ashahada to Shahada Tani. One of them is is what we've heard about, about Allah. The second one is, he asked, Woman Anna, who am I? Alaykum salam. So he asked him, Who am I? Man Anna. Who am I talking to you? And he says, Anta Rasulullah. You are the messenger of Allah. And he said, Alayhi salatu wasalam. 
fa inna ha mu'minatun free ha because she is a true believer the prophet questioned her belief and found that his belief was sound so if tomorrow somebody calls you and asks you hey in allah don't feel insulted you're asking me where allah is the messenger had asked that question alayhi salat was i would like to stop here my time had actually been consumed but let's not forget the major points in this um, hadith that we tried to look at the hadith of muawiyah ibn hakam as sulami and how the prophet alayhi salat was salam conducted himself in that hiwa so so back on that, I came out of the country and told me, "Allah, the head that you Allah fed the Adam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not if Mother Hewar will let. Allah, so far, Malaika, we on fed the Adam, Abara, sorry, let. Just just roll the phone and turn, parallel roll the young. Bina roll the pay, I want to know God. I want to join. But I'm not saying by just roll the Allah, I want to know. Allah, I need to be Adam, God just roll the. Roll the pay, I want to join Allah, God done it. I want to roll the roll the. Don't know your kid town name as son of Sirpe, who say, Let me sparkle and so I never had them playing a consuadre. Intimacy, I live at a long way. I pray you are sorry along about Lori Lane here. Be a comet din, a shy din, he, a la Hajima Moro, Pokama fear to a similar lele. So I'm going to survive on Malaka, Malaka, and our so gave in tea along from my quitter. Someone told that by a by on Sumash by on Sumash. So so <laughs> Kalau atau jalan fiha, mana yang sedih fiha, mana yang sedih fiha sekurang kurangnya. Awak yang sedih kurang dima. So, dia masih sebaja nak nak sebaja. Allah wajib nak kuli be. Oh, mantan man. Abi kau yang kau Allah love fuan, Allah love file yang mama. So, dah Allah ni cuma fikir mana yang eh, dah dah maju belo. Emi mama tan man. Inter mana ni pe? Bye bye no seri. So, orang kita ni dah orang tu lusi dia orang ayah. Ibu nak orang suatu mujadil, suatu mujadil lah, dua suatu mujadil lah. Emi orang ni masih pe mujadil lah, mujadil lah. So, saya cuma ikut ini. Eh, so nak pergi walau ya semua tak hau rokum mah. Aus, salaba, bonus summit ati haula. Awak ni yang selalu lalu doa awak jangan so far jump to roll lah lah awak. Ada pun baju kaya semua dia. So kau ibu so, so ye, so ye, so that eh, baju awak selalu ni awak meji. So Allah awak supaya awak do best jump for jump to roll lah ni awak aku hati awak. Ini tu masuk ke situ tu, ke situ pun beda ni. Tu lepas yang kini katanya pun akan yang clear, ke situ beda ni kerja jauh fakir kasih hewar, na na rawa. So baca na Allah Allah subi, entah Allah subi pun bana bisalah salam. Bos es bawa masyukin, bos es bos es bawa masyukin. Orang sih lepas bawa, entah mumba, orang ni pun bana bisalah hewar pelawa sahabat. Orang aku kena fuh, orang ni hadis si Muawiyah bin al Hak bin Hakan as Sulami. Orang jika dia pun Sulami atau si, hmm, Sulami. Sulami, so nisba Allah subhanahu wa taala. Ino nahu fuail, kama bafes nisma sekwe fuali. So ye, so Sulaim, Sulaim ba makani ba no Sulaim. Awa ye jihad, wakwe ande bi jihad kasim nisi. Abi Dr Fadil, bi jihad kasim la ba no Sulaim. So ye ino awa. So that, anda awa ba no Salama. Awa wa ni no Medina. Abi abi bi kiblatin la awa. Awa la awa nabi so la awa nabi so fano hadis so hepi. يا بني سلام دياركم تكت دياركم دياركم تكتب أثاركم سوي سورة 
awon eyan ni oni en sulami yi latara bi Jerusalem lo ti wa o ni adesi yin ba won so pe awon oruko en ti awon oruko awon sabe tin jemo awia won koja 40 so ye wa so that gba won ni ma se so inu won ni mo awia gbon abi sufian n bele yi mo awia gbon hakami sulamini o ya to sira won o ni da teni kan sin n bi da kan pe o do ton son so alhamdulillah so ye wo fa hamdallah bo ni kan 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 pe n ti ge bi e ko to nko won se se won islam ni ke yin o ke o da ko ki en to ba sin pe ya alhamdulillah on the Shebe, Bamas, I bet you won't. Now, what? Take on Eh, So, no clues at Debbie Cray, Ben Cray, and I be saying, Baffle, Jotor, Jumtor, or Debbie Cray. Of a better question, Lord, and I be Christ, Solo, Lord, Salam. Some of the little bar, I want Tim Bandaliba, I want Camber now, Tim and Lassia, Dama, Dabiba, and Tim Lotus Banu, I bet in Lomino, I bet in Lora, I bet in Loya Penu, look back on anyone, I dabi Bana, anyone, and I be in a palata at him, Mala Sodoma. I want to talk about why that can be done. I can't wait to turn on him as soon as we look. If we turn on the bad guy and cast on him, we are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. We are not going to be able to stop him. Tak pun ada dia bawa farah balik. Kau kau don't tell her we ni. Tuh orang kau ada bini mi. Kira ni tu her we kini kan semua mas. So ye, kau ni farah kau ni. Kau eh kau tuja di lara lara ye. Tuh bisan fanta nabi zat sa fanta tarik kau ni selebe. Kau yang kau orang kalau kuman listing sirama. Kau kan orang kau ni kamera kau moto bi. Ini moto dah masro. Kau tu orang kau mana do? Eni kau tu orang kau tu orang bela terdeni kan. So wanong kau insya Allah Allah nasi kau lah malah yang kau nak kau lah hina nak kulu hina nak kulu. So orang tu ada ni orang sama awal ni sama awal jahili orang tu sun. So that you done. If you are not mad, you are not mad. 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 You are أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. أه دكتور أتون بوا صورنيس. وناني دكتور فاضل بن نور الدين الإمام. كي ألان دا كونكوسي عليكم إما فوا. أه وني ما كيا ابتدائي ولا تدو والدوا. Mwaka mutawasito ni Markaz Shababu li Islam Iwo Abi Athanawia ni Maad la Arabi Nigeri Ibadan Abi Jamia ni Kulia tu Dawa Ni Aljamia tu Islamia ni Madina Ni Kulia Dawa La ina Kulia Dawa atimi Mabuya ilamu wambe Lodo tiwa ilamu wambe ni uriyatu Wambe Kulia Dawa li uli ilamu Mwaka kobe ni to Mwaka kobe ni to Laina magister kismu la aqida ni aljamiat li islamiya na ibena na majishi doktora so mwa aje nisi mudiru markaza ahli sunna wal jamaa ni iwu ni nigeria ni ushugu mwa si ni okoloko tira okoloko tira tuwa tishi abe yi tuwa si tarjama abe yi tuwa si muroja fun Harawa abifu wizara shono la Islami ya, so kita arifu ma ba kumi ma ba kodi gari lo, eje kagbe ma kifu, yu bala hiyo so eda kwa ma sola ba wa. Alhamdulillah, aso ni aso la ba wa timu kodi ma inti. Hiyo ndi leo. Alhamdulillah ili wahid ili kahar, mukalli bil laili wa nhar. مجري السحاب والأنهار والصلاة والسلام على أفضل الأخيار والداع إلى الله في الليل والنهار وأطيب من كل الطيب والأزهار وعلى آله الطيبين الأطهار وأصحابه الأبرار ومن تبعهم في الدعوة والبيان وحسن الحوار أما بعد 
نشكر القائمين على مجمع السنة ونسأل الله تبارك وتعالى أن يجزيهم جزاء أوفى في الدنيا والآخرة وحضوري ومشاركتي معهم ليس هذا أولها ولا ثانيها وأسأل الله تعالى ألا يجعلها آخرها أيضا ولا أنسى شكر صاحب الفكرة الأولى وهو الملك وهو خادم الحرمين الشريفين الملك عبد الله ابن عبد العزيز آل السعود رحمه الله رحمة واسعة فإنه هو رائد الحوار قبل موته ونسأل الله عز وجل أن يثيبه وأن يجعله في النحاة أم أن يلقوا لن أروى باولي أصلي دي عربيك أو ما يننا إن تكو بلي دي وا تيبو بو أكبو Kanti mwa sole di arabi ki ni soki ni pe Mose ya kwe lopo lopo fwa lopo ba Ade se ya kwe lopo a sola Ati a salam Fwa nabi wa muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Awa Ti wwa kwe Majma a sunna dan La turi Aswa juwa Fadila tu sheikh ad doktor عبد الرزاق ابن عبد المجيد الارو حفظه الله ورعاه اتبو بو اون تي وان دورو تي وان نبي سي اولون با يو دارا بوكو وي بي كي بوغو كاما باتاكي تي وان بي ني حوار مورو بوتي وان نو اون توبيك تي او وان واجو با مو ريم بي هيسي ما كاين لي نينو ويم Lain-lain Apolopo yuwi la wain yon ko Eni ti u de ko Apolopo yuwi la wain yon ka Ay min Ti mou min pelu yuwi Ati ti la nan yon Soukba E yi to kuwa ku ni se si se O langba O ton kwen fwa Pwi wak kone pa hiwar Ahami yato li hiwar Lá de se rewar, o seu bem o que pratica. E de nem, tu fez já se viu que é meu nem a se pedi e o eterno nunca cai, não há juízo em lá de marca. Porque é o que tem o de fone, é nem tem o abate de fone, tu vai fazer o que vamos fazer com o meu carfone. O seu bem para o lá se achive, é de jogo. Si vous faites ce que vous avez fait, vous avez fait ce que vous avez fait. Et vous avez fait ce que vous avez fait. 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 Vous avez fait. I want to ask you 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 to ask you